Rotator cuff disorders are incredibly common and we are always searching for new and better treatment options. One of these treatment options is dextrose prolotherapy. We know it works well to treat symptomatic knee arthritis, but does dextrose prolotherapy work to treat symptoms related to the shoulder and the rotator cuff? Let's look at what the latest clinical trials say. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. My goal is to help each and every one of you live an active and healthy lifestyle. So if that's something you're interested in, please consider subscribing to my channel. Rotator cuff disorders are among the most common causes of shoulder pain. They contribute greatly to pain, loss of function, and decreased quality of life. And people who have severe or persistent symptoms are often advised to get a cortisone injection. Cortisone is a steroid. It has really strong pain relieving properties as well as anti-inflammatory effects. But more recent studies are showing potential side effects of corticosteroid injections. This is why we are looking for alternate options to treat pain and symptoms related to the shoulder and one of those options is dextrose prolotherapy. Prolotherapy involves injecting a hypertonic solution to help treat a musculoskeletal condition. According to this study, although the precise mechanism of the prolotherapy effect is not fully understood, hypertonic solutions are believed to produce an inflammatory response through the recruitment of chemical mediators and growth factors that stimulate local healing of the injured tissues. Okay, so that's prolotherapy. What about dextrose? Dextrose is molecularly very similar to glucose. That means dextrose is a type of sugar. Now, before you think this is completely new age nonsense, dextrose prolotherapy treatment has actually been used since the 1950s. The thought process is to use the irritant effects of hyperconcentrated dextrose solution to stimulate the body's healing mechanism. So to sum it up, Dextrose prolotherapy involves injecting concentrated dextrose solution into an injured tissue to try to stimulate healing and reduce symptoms. Now the question is, does it work for the rotator cuff? This study is a randomized control trial comparing dextrose prolotherapy injections to control saline injections. They had 73 participants and administered three monthly treatments. At their nine month follow-up time, the authors found that the dextrose prolotherapy group had significantly more participants with sustained improvements in pain when compared to the control group. This study was particularly interesting because their study participants had moderate to severe shoulder pain on average for about seven and a half years. This is not a normal patient population with shoulder pain. These patients have already tried a variety of treatment options, all of which have failed. The fact that this population showed improvements to symptoms is rather favorable to dextrose prolotherapy. But of course, that's just one study. Let's look at another study to see if they found similar results. This is a randomized control trial comparing dextrose prolotherapy to saline injection. It's a smaller study with only 57 patients, all with rotator cuff tendinopathy. They administered one dextrose injection or one saline injection and measured pain and functional outcomes. The authors found that the dextrose prolotherapy group had significantly better improvements to pain and function at two weeks, but that these effects were short-lived and not sustained. By six weeks, there was no longer any difference between the dextrose prolotherapy group and the control group. Interestingly, the authors also measured rotator cuff tendon thickness at six weeks and at 12 weeks. A thicker tendon is a sign of more severe tendinopathy. The dextrose prolotherapy group was found to be significantly less thick at both six weeks and at 12 weeks compared to baseline. This effect was not seen in the control group. The authors go on to conclude that dextrose prolotherapy can provide short-term pain 
and disability relief in patients with chronic rotator cuff tendinopathy, and that it can also lead to improved tendon morphology. Now, I want to point out one critique of this study, and that's the authors went with only one injection. Most prolotherapy treatments recommend anywhere between three to eight treatment sessions at two or four week intervals in order to alleviate pain and improve function. One possible explanation for the short-lived effects of this study is that they simply did not administer enough injections. Moreover, the fact that they saw improvements to tendon morphology with only one injection is rather promising. One hypothesis is that if the authors gave more injections, they would have seen even better results. Okay, so the first study that administered three injections got improvements to pain at nine months follow-up. The second study administered one injection and only got improvements to pain at two weeks. We're getting conflicting results here. This is where we need to aggregate a bunch of data together and perform a systematic review and meta-analysis. And that's what this study did. They pulled together the results of five randomized control trials for a total of 272 to participants. The first thing the authors noted was that prolotherapy protocols vary widely. Some studies used a multi-site injection protocol where they administered dextrose all around the shoulder. Other studies used a single site injection. Some studies gave a series of injections, whereas other studies gave only one treatment. When we see multiple protocols like this, it's a red flag that we are still experimenting and don't yet know what works best. Okay, with that said, let's see what they found. After analyzing the data, the authors found that dextrose prolotherapy involving multi-site injection protocols had significantly better improvements to pain, whereas single-site injections did not. Moreover, we also learned that multiple treatments may be better than a single treatment. The authors conclude that dextrose prolotherapy is a potentially effective adjuvant intervention to physical therapy for patients with rotator cuff tendinopathy, but that further studies are needed to determine optimal technique, volume, and location. So I definitely agree with this last part the most. Dextrose prolotherapy is just not well studied for the treatment of rotator cuff tendinopathy, and more clinical trials are needed to tease out the best protocols. With that said, it definitely seems like a promising treatment option, especially for someone who wants to avoid surgery, has gotten multiple cortisone injections, and is still in pain. I would put dextrose prolotherapy slightly below PRP injections for the treatment of rotator cuff disorders. Both treatment options have mixed evidence with some studies showing benefit while others showing no benefit. However, PRP is much better studied and seems to be slightly more favored. Check out this video next if you want to learn more about PRP for rotator cuff conditions. Thanks for watching.